So let's dig a bit deeper into the object model and get into properties, methods, and events that make up the objects found within Microsoft Excel. And more importantly to us right now, through VBA. So we're gonna take a look at perhaps one of the most common objects that you'll work with within Excel VBA. We're gonna take a look at the worksheet object. So open back in front of you again, I've got the Microsoft object model page. And on the left hand side, remember that table of contents there, I found the worksheet object. So here's the worksheet object. So the worksheet object is a member of the worksheets collection. Okay, so there's actually a bigger topic here. I'm not gonna get too in depth into it right now, but Microsoft Excel, a workbook object can have multiple worksheets within it, right? You could have one, two, three, 255. In the newest editions of Microsoft Excel, you could have loads of them. Now, Microsoft now says that it's based off of your computer's performance, right? It's memory and such. So you can have a huge amount of worksheets inside of Excel. But as with anything, the more you add, the slower it's going to become. So just something to watch for, right? You might have 12 worksheets inside of a workbook, one for each month. You might have 52 worksheets inside of a workbook, one for each week, right? Or for various topics, whatever it might be. Point is, you can have more than one worksheet inside of a workbook. And that worksheet becomes one of a collection of worksheets within your workbook, right? So that's all they're saying there. It's an object is a member of the worksheets collection. The worksheets collection contains all the worksheet objects in a workbook. All right, just said that. And they'll give you an examples of the worksheet object and how you can work with it. Now back to the table of contents down below, you've got that object consists of its structure, its blueprint, right? What is the worksheet object really contain? Well, it's got events, things that are triggered. For example, if I go to Excel and I click on a tab, like I click on sheet one or sheet two or sheet three or whatever, right? I'm activating a worksheet. And when I do that, it triggers an event called activate. Boom, right? Something can happen and we can write some code that is triggered, that runs when that event happens. So there's one for activate. You select it, right? You're selecting that tab. Uh, when it becomes deactive, you deactivate a tab by going to another one. We can have something else happen. Now, let's see, what might be another good one in there? Uh, pivot table update. I get people asking this question all the time. Okay, well, I wanna refresh my pivot table, right? Can you update the data in there? Well, we could use the activate command or, or event of the worksheet object to say, now refresh the pivot table on that worksheet. But they've got one in there for pivot table update. You update the pivot table, something happens, like refresh the data or don't refresh the data. I don't want it to happen. But these events, they get triggered. And important to us, we get to dictate and tell it what to do when that event happens. Now, this is just for the worksheet object. But every object inside of Excel has events that are tied to them. Now we've also got methods, right? The nice people up in Microsoft as they're building and developing Microsoft Excel, they've built in functionality that we can take advantage of for each of these objects. As an example, this is the worksheet object again, right? Like sheet one or sheet two. We got the activate, we can tell it to activate it. So that's not only an event, but it's a method because we got to tell it to activate it before the event for triggering happens for the activate event. Now let's see, we got delete. I want to delete a worksheet programmatically through VBA. They built a method for it. We don't have to tell it exactly what to do to delete the worksheet. We just say worksheet delete, get rid of it. It does it for us. There's one for copy. There's one for paste. Uh, there's one for protect. There's one for unprotect. You might need a password for that one. And I actually give you an example of that down below. All right, there's one for protect. Uh, look at that, print out. Uh, and they'll list out a few of the methods, built-in functionality for this object that we can invoke or call through our VBA code. Okay. And then we have properties, right? These are characteristics that make up the worksheet object. So let's see, what might be a good one inside there? 
Uh, they got comments. They got columns. We're familiar with columns, A, B, C. Uh, let's see, you probably got one for rows, right? If we keep going, there's one for rows inside of there. Uh, what is its parent? Does it have a parent? Is there an outline? What's the name? What's the name of the worksheet? Or can I change the name of the worksheet? Properties, characteristics that make up that object. Now, I've mentioned this in prior videos. You got the objects, and then those objects, they consist of elements that help us communicate and really drive through VBA that object itself and start to automate our tasks. So let's just take a look at a quick preview of this, and I wanna encourage you to try it out, see what you can do. And for our experience here, let's just move that off to the side. I'm gonna use the immediate window once again, but I am gonna push this off to the side so I can see both the workbook and Excel. And maybe I'll add a couple more worksheets here. I'm just hitting the plus sign just to add a few. See that VBA window back. All right, so let's see. Methods. Let's talk about a method first here. So inside my immediate window, I am going to type in, uh, we could do really explicit. I could be really explicit here. I could say application dot active workbook dot active whatever. I can get really specific and lay down the path, the hierarchy that it should follow, right? I could say application dot active, oops, let's say active workbook, okay? And then I can say, oh, we're gonna get into the worksheet object of the active workbook. So I'm gonna say worksheet, worksheets, and I'm gonna get into a specific worksheet here. So I'm gonna say worksheets, I'm gonna open up a parentheses, and it wants to know an index. It wants to know which worksheet I wanna to, want to work with or I wanna reference here. So I'm currently on sheet four, which its index is one, two, three, the fourth worksheet in the collection. Okay. So I'm gonna say worksheets, and I'm gonna say one, because I wanna go back to the first one. I wanna go back to this hello world worksheet. So I'm gonna close that parentheses, and I'm gonna say dot, Activate, activate, make sure I spelled that correctly. I'll hit my enter key and it's taking me back to the first worksheet within the active workbook. Hello world, right there it is. Let's see, now that was really explicit. I told it the exact path, application.activeworkbook.worksheets, get to number one and activate it. All right, select it, go to it, whatever. So, but I don't have to get as explicit because I'm not working with multiple workbooks. There's some, defaults or assumptions that Excel will take as you're writing code. So if I just did this, worksheets, and I'm gonna say four dot activate. Looks good, I'll hit my enter key. So I didn't get as explicit with it, kind of a little more general, right? And it, take, it took me directly to sheet number four. One, two, three, and four, right there. Right. I didn't have to tell it, oh, make sure you're in the right workbook and make sure you're in the right application and so on. No, but I've only got one instance of Excel open. I've only got one workbook open. So I don't really necessarily have to get as explicit with it because I'm not communicating with other workbooks or, or other applications. So it's right there. But that's all utilizing the activate method. It's that simple. Now we can build on this. We can take it a bit further. I'm going to say worksheets. Now, when I open up the parentheses there for the, the uh, worksheets object, it wants to know which worksheet, and they can call it an index. The default, they're looking for a number, right? Is this worksheet number one? Is it number two? Is it number four? Is it number 255? Which one do you want? Well, numbers, it's based on the collection. Remember, the collection of all the worksheets. And I want to get to a specific one, but I don't always remember its position, its numeric position in the collection but I may remember its name. So the index can also be the name of a worksheet. So I could say in quotes, hello world. Let's make sure I spell it correctly. Close that parentheses, dot activate, and I'll hit my enter key, and it takes me to hello world. So this is all utilizing the worksheets object, which consists of all of the worksheets within the workbook, right? Again, take a peek, get back into that object model window that I'll again provide the link in the description down below. 
you'll find it all the information right there and we've just taken a look at the activate method but there are loads of other methods in there well worth your time to take a peek let's see give you an idea copy is a great one oh let's see what might be another good one instead of paste is a good one print print preview those are great ones take a look at them they'll give you examples of how to work with them there's some a little bit of code right there not so much on this one but and everything that you can do within the print out method of the worksheets object so take a look at it